Who the man with the plan? Who the man? Who the man, who the man with the plan? Yeah. yeah. Who the man with the plan? Yeah. Who the man with the plan? Hey. Yeah. Who the man with the plan? Who the man? QM, yeah, I am, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Shoot yeah, I am. clips like a homie on cam. QM, yeah, I am, yeah, I am. Goddamn, goddamn. Who the man with the plan? QM, yeah, I am, yeah, I am. Soon as I hear the boss, goddamn. QM, yeah, I am, yeah, I am. Goddamn, killer shit going ham. Damn, all of them needing a hand out. G'day Quaylen, how's it going? What's up my bro, I'm doing well eh? I've got a, got a free coffee so I'm doing pretty well eh? <laughs> sure. uh, So to start things off I want to ask you a real hard hitting question Sweet um, So what's your favourite song ever? What's the best song ever? Damn, that's, that's a very good one eh? <laughs> um, there's like a top 5 in there but a lot of them kind of shape the way I do music now like right I know the one that started me on this whole rapping thing that actually made me think yo I could do this was Hobson Illmind 4 like I just saw him as, as a hood kid that came from nothing and started yeah. making his own beats and filmed his own video and nobody wanted to help him but he put it out anyways and boom it went viral and his life changed and he's so, a real intelligent follower as well hell you? yeah bro hell yeah. yeah he's going through some stuff now and you know what i mean all the best tops and but like you know what i mean that song definitely got me started like you know yeah. like thinking oh yo this is possible for a young kid with nothing in his background to just go for it and try yes. it out and, and that's what made me start music so i have to give it up to ops and mind for that's probably my favorite song sure sure and does a lot of your music reflect his style or definitely i've, I've definitely got like when i started out as well i got a lot of comparisons to yeah. him because of the inspiration he had on my music <coughs> and um i think that's low-key why i take the the old lyrical route yeah. When it comes to, you know, even the new, new age of music, I'm still uh, kind of conforming to that as well. Right. But I keep the lyrical element just to pay homage to people like Hobson, you know what I mean? Right, right. So I definitely see a lot of him in me. Awesome, awesome. How old were you then? Um, I would have been year 12, so probably like 16, 17 or something like that. So True. yeah, it's, it's been about six years now that I've been doing it. Awesome. Yeah. And I think that's that's what made me take it serious. I, I've always been like writing raps here and there, but what re what I what really made me take it serious was that year, the year 12, 2012, You know? Yeah. And I just saw so many dope artists doing it and building something from nothing that I thought, yo, I gotta start. <laughs> yeah. And I started at 17, and I'm here now, <laughs> still doing it. And there's uh, quite a quite a. Um, big community of rappers in South Auckland too, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, a lot of people are very into their own sectors, I feel. Yeah. You know, I feel, um, uh, I, I know I shouldn't say it too much, but I, I do feel like an outsider sometimes when it comes to the Auckland scene. Yeah. And um, maybe I shouldn't because some people do, a lot of people do mess with my music, you know what I mean? But mm. a, a lot of people don't and they don't give the time. So, you know what I mean? I just feel like I'm a Capetonian rapper that's out here in Auckland trying to make it, you know? Yeah. I, would, I would, I don't know if I'd consider myself an a Auckland artist per se. Yeah. But um, I definitely think the South Auckland scene is booming right now. Awesome. And I felt like if everybody just worked together, we could crack it just as big as like Miami and the United States, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this music scene could blow up if everyone just stopped thinking about their egos <laughs> you know that's how i feel about the auckland scene but other than that the auckland scene is very very talented and like there's music here that you can't find anywhere else in the world yeah and i think we should vote on that awesome and just on that subject so what's the interaction like between the different groups the crews i'll tell i'll tell you that the reaction is is from, for the most part is polite you know, a lot of, when people do come come to your shows or they watch one of your videos, they'll come in and say it's dope, you know. But um, I still don't think artists, and including myself, I don't talk like a saint because I'm the same way and the game has made me like this. Mm. But, you know, I, a lot of people are a bit egotistical and, you know, they don't really support your music like they should, you know, the way you'd feel like your backyard should support you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's a lot more competitive, but in saying that, I'm fine with that too. That's what hip-hop was built on, 
You know what I mean? And I get everyone's just trying to get to the same place on the top without pushing themselves down to help you. I get that, you know? But um, I, I definitely think the people that grew up with each other from childhood, like uh, people like Swidit and the, uh, you know, a bunch of groups that are out here, all the record labels that are out here, they all childhood friends, so they know each other from way back. Right, yeah. So it's deeper than the music, you know what I mean? And I think we don't put the music in the forefront, it's more the personal, you know, it's, it's more the personal feelings and all that. Yeah. But yeah, the Auckland scene, I'm not trying to spout bad about the Auckland scene because the Auckland scene is still amazing and people are doing crazy things out of here and, and you can't be nothing but proud of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. No matter how you feel about it, you still want to be proud. True, true, true. But still a, a close scene. Yeah, I definitely feel like, and that's just, that's just my point of view, you know, that's from my experience here and I've only been doing it for six years. You might um, interview another South Oakland rapper and he'll have a very different outtake on what I have, but that's just from my experience personally. I feel very shut off from the South Oakland scene. I feel like I get a lot more love from back home, the people that I don't live with. Back on the other side of the world, they give me a lot more love than I get here, which is fine. That's okay, you know what I mean? They're definitely, it's a good thing to support yours, you know? Yeah. And, and I feel it's, it's very good how the people get behind their artists in their community, you know? I think it's really good. And do you receive, um, what well, you're just saying, a lot of your the people back home um, praise yeah. you and stuff. Do they also give you a lot of uh, uh, constructive criticism to yeah. help you? Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. I've heard, um, but see, back home, it's, it's a bit different because a lot, not a lot of people have that opportunity. So I don't really meet a lot of people that I'm far behind, right. you know what right. I mean? So everyone that really hears me, like back home, I'm not very well known, but in my neighborhood, like people know who I am. And that's simply because I'm the best one doing it from there so far. And when people see that, now I'm starting to see from my neighborhood, people that are rising up that are almost 10 times better than me because they've heard me and they've gotten inspired, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what it was. I, I feel like I was just one of those first dudes that got that opportunity to travel to another side of the world and rap about another side of the world that made them think, yo, we gotta get started here yeah. home now. You yeah. know what I mean? The homie went over there, broke us out, so got started up there. We could do this at home. And I'm really proud of what like my scene has come out. You know, like yeah. like this music in South Africa that cannot be touched by the world. Yeah. You know? And I really believe that. And I think that's because of people like us that just step out there and try to do it ourselves, you know? Yeah. So Especially you still maintain a uh, connection with yeah for sure for sure like uh, there's, there's a lot of big artists now that are a lot bigger than me as well but I always make sure I watch their grind and I watch their hustle and see how far they've come because Pick that's people tips here, yeah, yeah that's my people from my backyard you know yeah and I always show mad support like that's how I feel like the Auckland scene is to their people you know mm. like some of the rappers out here they get a lot, a lot of support from their home crowd. And that's an amazing thing to see. It's, it's amazing to see music bring people together like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why I've been doing it for so long and I still do it. You know, there's a lot of positive to come out of it. The competition is positive too, you know? Mm, like yeah. it's good to have competition. It's, I think I like the game like this, people shouting me out because it makes me work harder, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. otherwise I'll just be sitting on my ass trying to wait for a handout to, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Well, actually, um, clips and some of your work to the interview. Uh, yep, yep, sweet. No, quite yeah. But <coughs> what do you write about? What inspires you? What in your music? I, I really, it's, it's, it's all about uh, real life, like just really what's happening in my own life, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of people get on when they when they ask, what do you write about? People say, oh my stuff is unique, it's something that no one's ever heard. I wouldn't claim to say that. You would probably heard my stuff and a lot of people's other stuff, but that's really what I'm going through, you know what I mean? So like, I've, I've always been, if I could say what I really write about, it's anything and everything. Every single raw emotion that a human goes through is what I write down. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's what my music is. It's just if a beat comes on, I put it like this. 
if I didn't have this music thing, I'd be crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd need a psychiatrist if I didn't yeah. have this music thing. Therapeutic. But this, yeah, this is my therapeutic output. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if you really listen to my music, all it really is is a big ass diary of Coil and Meth. Like, you yeah. know, and that's, cool. that's what I think cool. I write about. You know, awesome. I, I wouldn't want to say it's a particular thing. If I'm sad, it's going to be a sad ass song. Yeah. If I'm happy, it's going to be a happy song. If I'm lit, it's going to be a crunk ass song, yeah. you know? Yeah. Quite yeah, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I've never claimed to be no one I ain't. Never try to portray the gangster shit like mm. everyone else does, you know what I mean? I've just yeah. always tried to stick to myself and be myself. And everything you hear is things I've done. <laughs> yeah. So is, is that what you'd say music is to you, a, a, a therapy and a, and yeah, a, definitely. a way to get, get just everything out, out of your head? And definitely. I think, I think for, for any person in life, that's one of the best things you could do is find yourself an outlet. Something yeah. that you do. For some people it's gaming, for some people it's social media. Those are the people that become social media like... <laughs> Influencers. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's for them. Some people <coughs> put it out in sport, kickboxing, uh, soccer, rugby, all that, but always have an outlet. Never yeah. bottle shit in, like always have something you can take your raw emotion out on. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Even if that just means taking the pad and pen and writing shit down, doesn't have to rhyme, doesn't need to be a song, doesn't even need to be a story, just write, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That could be an outlet, you know what I mean? But that, I feel like that's how people lose themselves when they bottle all that shit in, yeah. you know what I mean? I feel you always gotta have an outlet and do something yeah. that makes you happy. Yeah. Sure, that's what music sure. is to me and I'm happy I found it. You know, I've been through a lot of stuff, I've been through a lot of phases of things that I thought would help me, you know, it's stuff like, alcohol drugs you know what i mean that's why i ain't no drug yeah i ain't no alcoholic because this music shit is my drug you yeah. know that's what i'm addicted to yeah. so awesome awesome yeah. and uh speaking of your music so uh, as i was telling you before i went through and, and it had a real dive into everything that's dope and um yes yeah, so there's a few things i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. um so for your uh music video new eyes yeah uh, the entire time there's like this animated head yeah, over yeah. your face how, yeah. how did you guys do that all right it's an hilarious story okay because it's so simple people will trip out on how simple it is yeah everyone asked me how i made the animation there's or no animation but the head that's yeah. on my normal head right yeah and the way we figured that out was my homie that i do videos with shout out to him he does not want to be named so i ain't gonna blast fair his enough, name out you enough. know what i mean yeah. that's why it's just qi entertainment if you're looking for videos hit up qi entertainment yeah <laughs> but the way we did it was we always shot our videos with iphone 10s at the start right, right we never had the camera the big canon camera yet we just thought the iphone 10 camera looks so clear and so concise that we don't need nothing you know yeah so we started shooting with that and one day this update came for the developers, if, like some, some people got developer um, Apple accounts. Yeah. Right, right, and right. I don't know if you guys remember the whole Bitmoji thing. Mm -hmm. You could kind put of, like yeah, a little, yeah. monkey. you could look yeah, in the yeah, phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. the monkey would come up and you could like bug yeah. the monkey. Yeah. So this new update came up before anyone else got it. And this right. was in September sometime around then. Yeah. And um, we got it first and this is where you could animate your uh, bitmoji so <laughs> i animated myself a bitmoji yeah. and i screen recorded myself yeah. rapping the song yeah and all my homie did was take the screen recording cut out the head and mapped it to my actual face <laughs> and that's how it went down and it made it look like the whole video was just a crazy ass animation yeah but really all yeah. it was was iphone just, app. just the food it, for real it was sure. just an iphone app sure. that you can you can send a text like that to somebody awesome. nowadays you know what i mean and mm -hmm. that's how simple it was and if you look at it now you look at people like lil nas x take my horse yeah. oh yeah if yeah. you look at his videos he's got like three different bitmoji videos with oh, yeah. with the face in it yeah. you know what i I mean? Yeah, and we used that way back in September, so I don't so care. You guys did who, it first. Yeah, who gets the clout for it? I swear we did it first. <laughs> I swear we did it first. We think we can go look back at the day till we did it first. But yeah, it was that simple. It was that simple, and like that's all I ever went for with the videos is just simplicity. You know, a lot of people take too long to put videos out and sit on a video for three years, put it out, and don't get the buzz they expected. You know, whereas at least if I put it out in the flops, it's like, <laughs> hey, I did it in a week and I put it out in a week. So yeah, didn't expect much from it, you know, but that, that video took off because 
it was the first time people ever like, saw something like that, mm, yeah. you know, and I was real proud of that one, yeah. And so has that opened um, opportunity, opened doors, just being able to uh, make your own videos and put uh, them on platforms? Monetary, yep, for sure. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we've, we've definitely made a little bit of money off it, not like we made a lot of money off it, you know, but I shoot a little bit of videos here for my homies here and there, give them a little discount price, you know. Yeah. But um, really, all it's really done is just made me... Uh, deeper as an artist you know for, for years i put out songs with just the picture and nothing else visually to look at and um i feel like now people engage with my my stuff a lot more when they see i'm at a certain place they can say oh that shot was dope you know it makes it less about the music and more about the visuals and that's yeah. something i've been trying to get into and i think that's why i release so many videos now and something visual at least you know? yeah yeah and speaking of um so I was watching your uh, problem uh, problem child mm -hmm. music video. Yeah. Was that shot at Mount Roscoe? Was no, no, no. Right? That wasn't shot at Mount Roscoe. That was shot at um, Manaka Heights. Oh, okay. Manaka Heights. Okay, yeah, just yeah. up there. Um, so kind of like all the way at the back of Tertiary Park. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We used I know to hike up there from time to time. But then you could take a road, Manaka Heights road. Yeah. You could get off there and just go to the straight to the top. But yeah, yeah that's where it was shot. That was a really dope scene, yeah. Yeah, yeah that. that whole song was quite quite deep, eh? Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what exactly is that about? Well, I just, uh, you know, like, I, I come from a family where uh, my mum and my father's divorced. I've, they've been divorced since I was seven. Yeah. So, my father remarried. Right. And, um, you know, just all the problems of getting used to yeah. a new family. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always felt like I was... Uh, a bit of a black sheep in the family and I always felt like the problem child mm. hence the track problem child and you know I kind of just went off that and I'm not gonna lie I was pretty uh, faded when I wrote the song because <laughs> I was in South Africa at the time and I was getting a lot of inspiration from South Africa yeah. I went back for my nan's funeral and um, yeah I, it was my 21st birthday so I decided screw it I'm gonna stay for the next five months until my 21st birthday yeah. and at the time I just got back through injury through a broken jaw unrelated Ooh. to music it just <laughs> happened on a very bad night <laughs> you sure you weren't just singing too hard <laughs> nah nah that's not what happened hey it happened at McDonald's man I was trying to get some chicken nuggets <laughs> you know what I mean but anyways apart from that story I went back um, with a broken jaw and I always felt like that would have been the end of my that was the first time I ever felt that adversity you know of mm. I'm about to quit doing music because you know I didn't sound the same anymore um, my mouth yeah. just wasn't working right you know what I mean and going back to South Africa gave me a lot of inspiration to why I shouldn't quit you know watching my homies that, that I grew up with struggling and just hearing my music and it's like a breath of fresh air to them just knowing that I'm needed somewhere changed me up and like yeah. brought this whole other rage you know yeah. and and that's what those songs that I wrote in South Africa about like problem child was just you know things that I saw in my life I probably wasn't even right I'm probably not even a problem child I'm sure my parents love me to death you know what I mean and sometimes I think of that image as myself you know and that's mm. how I reflect to myself you know yeah. I mean I might not even feel like I'm a problem child now but at the time I can't fool anyone, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I felt at the time. I felt like I was a problem child. That's really what it's about. And do you feel like that song was like a real uh, evolution and revamp of, of your, uh, your record? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was like uh, coming off an injury, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially one that, that affects your speech, you know, mm. thinking you're never sure. going to do it again. Like, it, it definitely brought a whole different side out to me. And, you know what I mean? I don't think I'd be advanced in my music as I am now if it wasn't for that. So I'm glad stuff like that happened, you know? Yeah. And that's definitely that whole tape, the whole levitation tape where that song comes from is definitely a revamp of myself. Awesome. And, you know, awesome. just a, a, a lot more motivated and more hungry, Quillen, I think. Cool. Yeah. cool. Um, so you, you have another one. Mm -hmm. called I Am, which uh -huh. is another real cool one. Yeah. Um, and and you talk about the man with the plan. Yeah. Are you the man with the plan? That, that's me, I'm the man <laughs> with the plan. Uh, the, the plan hasn't worked out as well as I expected oh, it true. to, true. but I had a plan back then, you know <laughs> what I mean? I really, I, I'm not going to lie to you, that song was like, 
It was more of a braggadocio song, you know. I really did feel like that at the time, you know. Yeah. I was on a very, uh, uh, a, a very ego, egotistical high at the time. I yeah. feel, you know, I, everything was going right for me at the time, and I just yeah. felt really happy. Well, and, enough, and that man. was a really happy song. It was just, you know, yeah. real cocky, cheeky, yeah. left-handed. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's that's all it really was. But yeah, I, I, another project I'm very, very proud of the way it came up. It was really a time where I wasn't thinking too much. You know, yeah. it was very simple time where I. I didn't care about anything else but putting out the music, yeah. you know, and um, yeah, it shaped my mindset now too, you know, yeah. not too worried about what the future holds, I know if I just make dope music, I'm gonna get somewhere, cool. you know, and that's pretty much what that song is about too. But, yeah. What's the process of all that, like in, in making your music, like, yeah. in terms of getting your beats together, your yeah. and So usually, yeah. Right. I would usually have a meditation period, <laughs> you know, uh, and then jump on, jump on the computer, find a beat. Most of my songs are written in about 20 minutes, you know. Sure. I pretty much just write it, record it, and uh, if it sounds dope enough, I'll put it out. And if it doesn't, you'll never hear the light, you'll never see the light of day, which I've got tons of songs like that. But you know, I think that's my process. My process is not overthinking it. I, I could sit on a song for like, three or four days and write it for three or four days if I feel the need but yeah. you know what I mean usually the songs just come out like that you know? and uh, yeah and, and do you start with the lyrics or the beat um I've, I've only recently just started making beats okay. now yeah you know but back in the day I used to have a selection of beats that I'd go through and maybe I'd write one rap you know yeah. and then I would cycle through about 30 beats trying to do the same rap on each 30 beats right. and then figure out where I'm getting some bits. But then yeah. there's also been instances where someone sends me a beat and I like it that much, I just write the entire song, don't try it on anything else, just do the song, you know what I yeah. mean? But uh, my process lately, a lot of it has been uh, just finding beats, there's already stuff I've written. I got a lot of stuff I wrote last year that I'm just trying to find beats for now, you know? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do make it a point to write every day. Awesome, you know, awesome. and then at least maybe at least four or five lines a day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when you're talking about beats and that finding beats, yeah, are these like online beats where you can go and uh, grab them and use them and manipulate them and turn them into your yeah. own music and well, there's no copyright infringements or anything going on? So I've been through like phases in between like since I started and uh, to where I'm at now. Um, it started off with uh, I used to do covers, you know, like I used to yeah. take beats rap on them and then not make them my own songs just put them out as my remixes for yeah. the first year of my rapping that's how i did it then i ran into someone named liam conrad who goes by stuss now and he's doing big things too but we just don't make music anymore um he started making me beats and then i started getting infatuated with getting beats that nobody else has used for myself you know right. and um throughout those years i made a lot of uh, producers that i still do work with today and they'll send me beats from time to time when they very inspired you know they'll send me some stuff and um for the most part a lot of my stuff is is beats from people i know you know people that make beats for me um recently i have been doing the whole free youtube beats free for profit youtube beats you know but that's for stuff that i don't put on spotify and i know i'm not going to make monetary gains off them you know what i mean yeah. that's just stuff for my people to listen really? to mm -hmm. and um but now recently i've been i've been definitely thinking about making my own beats you know well you were saying that just before that yeah that you've been doing that like, yeah, you know? yeah 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 I've been, I've been selling beats and making beats mm -hmm. now roughly for like two months you know and, and I've, I've produced a lot of songs now that's in the vault for yeah. myself yeah. Um, that I could even turn into an album if I really wanted to without any contest, you know, no one could tell me I copyrighted nothing. So that sounds like a progressive thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it definitely is, but um, I, still, I, still, I still love to work with producers that want to work with me, you know, and I still got a lot of them that, that still hit me up 
and I still make music with a lot of people around the world. That's the beauty of the internet, you know. Like, yeah. you yeah, work with I work with people in Canada, I work with people in Germany, real low key producers, same same uh, fan base as mine. And we all just trying to push up there together, you know. Awesome. And um, yeah, uh, a lot of it has just been free YouTube beats. Maybe this year has just been a lot of YouTube beats um, and a lot of my own beats. And I've had a few beats here and there from other people. But yeah. Cool. And uh, with what, what, you, what you were saying about uh, selling beats, yeah. uh, how can people get a hold of you to. Oh, Facebook, bro. Facebook. Like, um, Quaylen Mathlay, that's my name, my full name. You Google that, you'll find everything you need to about me, my Spotify, SoundCloud, everything. No one has the name Quayla Mathlay, <laughs> only me. So, you know. Can you spell it, mate? Uh, Q-U-A-L-E-N space M-A-T-H-L-A-Y. And if you type that in anywhere, you'll find all my Facebook accounts. I've got two of them, which is my like page and my, my original page. You can hit up in either one. I constantly look at my messages. And um, beats are real cheap. I always, uh, if you if you become a customer, I'll send you snippets every week of new stuff I'm working on. And that's how you get a hold of me for anything: beats, music videos, dreads, if you like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything. So yeah, that's where to find me. What about um, bookings for performances? Uh, bookings yeah. for performances same is the same thing. You know, just talk to me about it. I, I usually negotiate a lot in terms of pricing because um, I know I'm, I'm a broke artist just like everyone else I know money ain't easy to come by you know what I mean so whatever based on what you got you know what I mean like I always make it fair you know yeah. so you can book me for anything you need got songs for any occasion <laughs> yeah yeah um, so a couple more questions before we before we wrap up so, um, your most recent song is called Heavy Line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I noticed in early on in the video you're holding a can of can of Fanta. Yeah. Is that product placement? Or did they pay you for that? They did that? not pay uh, me for that. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. I just picked that up at the dairy. <laughs> <laughs> I was thirsty and uh, I had the dries, so I decided, hey, Fanta, this new flavor. Try to flex with a new flavor of Fanta, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone want to flex with the lean bottle and the beer bottles. Brown well, match, matches the right side of your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, and the homie with the color manipulation, it just looked cool, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think we were going to use that scene, to be honest, until we put the colors in there, and I was right. like, we got something. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Fanta if you want to sponsor me. You know where to hit your boy up at. <laughs> Actually, which is an interesting question for us, is the um, creative editing process. Yeah. Because like you say, you work with uh, one of your homies yeah. and putting your goods together yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And so when you're actually deciding what images and how they're going to work and mix and so on, yeah. is that a collaborative or is there a it's, uh, it's not. It's not it? really. It's not at all. Um, the thing I like about the friend that I'm working with is we've been mates since 2010, you know, like since year 10, before I even started the music and we just like the same things, you know, so um, like I've been shooting videos all of this year, I shot one maybe last week and the way we do things is I find where I want to shoot, we have little ideas of our own, we shoot it and I just leave it with him, you know, even with other people's music videos. I just leave it to him because his style is like none other, I feel, you know? And I just feel like every time he, he sends me something back, he knows I won't be, I'll be happy with it, you know? Yeah. He just knows what to do. I don't need to tell him anything. If we're, we're shooting maybe one day and I see a scene that I really like, I'll tell him, yo, time stamp that, that has to be in the video. And he'll put it in the video, you know? Ooh. But that, that's, that's about the only creative process that I put into the editing. I'm more of like the business side of it, like yeah. I'll tell him we to hook up with, make sure that people pay me money and stuff yeah. like that. Sure. But he's, he's the mastermind, like I'll just say it now, QI Entertainment, my homie is the mastermind of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the businessman. All well, his videos um, go to show that. He's yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Awesome. And, and the buzzy thing about it too is, you know, he, he wasn't really into it. He, doesn't do videos he's just an IT whiz okay. you know and um one day the way it happened was um, actually going back to the problem child video 
you know uh, some of the scenes in there you wouldn't even notice he shot he shot some of those scenes and that was oh, shot yeah. by someone completely different Not and the true, way it went true. down was my videographer couldn't make it that day and uh, my homie had his iPhone he said screw it let's try it like and we tried it I loved it and it since then well. we've been making videos together you know and I'm true. blessed enough to have a video a videographer I don't need to pay <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all friendship based, it's all it's deeper than the music, deeper than the craft we're doing, we're friends at the end of the day, you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, that's the, I think that's the reason the videos come out so well, that's why they work so well, is because we're just friends that's doing it together, yeah. and we know what we like, you know? Cool. Yeah. cool. Um, speaking of the videos, um, there was one one video I saw a while back. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I was trying to find it on YouTube, but I couldn't find it. Um, and basically, you're you're on this balcony, and there's like all this drone footage. Uh huh. You, you know the one I'm talking about? Um, that could be Oshi. I think so. Was I was I wearing all black? I think so. Yeah, I might have been yeah. wearing all black. I was yeah. at someone's mansion. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, Oshi. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, how long did that take, and was it more or less difficult than? Than other videos ah, that, that, that was an easy one that took yeah. about a day to oh, yeah. do um, yeah. I was wasted <laughs> I don't know if you could tell in the video but I think that's what probably took up most of the time was getting my ass to behave yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know um, shout out to the boy Alex for letting me use his pad to shoot sure. that house uh, shoot yeah. the video in that house and um, that was a good experience that, that one was a it was a very laid back one too, I feel. You yeah. know, it didn't take a lot it of time. It seemed it, it seemed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it was on the fly too. We yeah, didn't really know what to expect when we got yeah. there. We didn't know what scenes we were going to shoot. Yeah, and, um, yeah, yeah. He had his drone and he had his phone and we got it done. Put two yeah. and two together? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, oh, yeah. I just want to go back to Heavy Line real quick. Mm -hmm. um, do you chill out at laundromats and rap often? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. yep. Well, now, hey, thank the Lord we got a washing machine, so we don't need to go to the laundromat no more. Fun fact, yes, that was the laundromat I went to yeah. every week to yeah. um, wash my clothes. So they knew you quite well? Yeah, well, no, nah, they didn't really. It's more like a self-serve thing. Oh, I just right, made right. sure I went late at night and nobody was there, yeah. you know, so I could shoot the, the, the video. You know, there was this random chick that walked in and they were drinking out the back so she was trying to offer me this beer in the laundromat and I'm already standing on their seats and stuff and I could see the cameras watching me and now they see me getting handed the beer too so I don't know if I'm banned from there I don't know we got the washing machine now so I never went back you know what I mean but yeah um, I hope I hope they were cool for um, yeah, I hope no one notices where it is. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I do. I do definitely sit in laundromats and rap often. <laughs> um, and uh, so you've got a song called Beyblade. Yeah. Everyone knows the hit, hit '90s anime. Yep. Early yep. 2000s anime. Yep. Um, so what was your inspiration with that? Were you just kind of sitting there, chilling out, watching some Beyblade? And nah, I, you know? I wasn't at the time. I was, um, are we allowed to be explicit? Yeah. Yep. Somewhat? Okay, so, I was I was having a bong rip. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was just thinking of the word bong rip, do you know what I mean? And ripping Beyblade, it up. Let it rip. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. I thought of the let it rip. And you know, I just... It was almost like things were working out in my favor, and then I remember I've seen a kid play Beyblades on the street one day, <laughs> yeah. and that just gave me another like idea, and I just decided to write a song about. I was really just like, I'm pretty sure I wrote it as a verse, yeah. and it was just supposed to be a little one-liner, yeah. and I read it over, and I was just like, ooh, that could just be the hook, and I could yeah. just call the song Beyblade, yeah. you know, yeah. after yeah. I heard it, and when I after I heard it. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go grab the Beyblade logo <laughs> and put that in my photo too, and like, you know? Yeah, but I love Beyblade as a kid too. I used to have like, yeah, I'm sure I used to collect them. Yep, yeah. we used to collect them motherfuckers, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one more yeah. question. Um, so you went to uh, Monaco Institute of Technology. Yep. Would you say that the uh, things you learned there helped your creative process with rapping at all? I could, I could definitely say uh, certain aspects of what I learned there has yeah. helped me 
quite tremendously able. Like, I definitely feel like definitely MIT helped me. You know, I just think I wasn't uh, applied and focused as much as I should have been. Yeah. Um, and that was the reason why I didn't really go through with it. But um, I definitely enough. got a lot of respect for the teaching at, at MIT because um, they made a lot of people really, really good artists and writers. Yeah. And um, it definitely helped me understand my writing a lot more. I look a lot deeper into even just my lyrics nowadays because of the things I've learned at MIT. So I definitely feel like they've helped. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so before we conclude, uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, um, YouTube channel, things yeah, like that? Yeah, YouTube channel, uh, just everything that I, I do is under my name, Koila yeah. Mathlay. I always thought to myself, <coughs> if I use my own name and not some cheesy ass rap name. Yeah. You know, if I screw up, it's all on me. I can't blame no one else. Yeah, so my enough. name, everything I got under my name is under my name. You know what I mean? Awesome. So that's for you guys that want to check it out again. Q U A L E N space M A T H L A Y. That's all I really want to plug. Um, I don't want to really give away too much uh, what's going to happen in the next couple yeah. of months because yeah. I just want it to happen. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And um, without telling anyone and I'll, without putting pressure on myself, enough, I'm going to say uh, album drop in September 12th. <laughs> Or might not, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely doing stuff all the time. Um, I, I definitely make it a point to put a song out at least every month, if not twice a month. So awesome. I'm always putting out contact uh, content. If you guys want to come check it out, cool, cool. yeah. Uh, any words of wisdom before we? Any words of wisdom? Just be yourself. You know what I mean. Don't worry what people say about you. You know what I mean. If you're genuine, it will shine through. No matter your faults, no matter your imperfections, just be you and people will catch on, you know what I mean? Never never give up on what you're trying to do. Um, always have an uh, emotional outlet, you know what I mean? Just be a good person, bro. Don't sure. mess up anyone else's life. Yeah. If you got to mess up someone's life, mess up your own, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but hey, peace, love to everyone. Stay blessed. <laughs>